Hello and welcome to the Comedy Button. My name is Anthony Gallegos. With me is Brian Altano. Brrrra, brrrra. Scott Bromley. What? Whoa, I just got a head rush on the internet. <laughs> uh, Max Scoville. You listen to Cr- Rennell and Christie in the morning, all of your favorite 80s hits, <laughs> right here on Kiss 98.1 <laughs> FM. Someone lives with a dentist. She leaves that station. No, I love that home. station. I love it. It's the best. Uh, Rennell, the San Francisco Giants. No, they listen to Wild 94.9 at her office. <laughs> and nobody knows who that is. Um, and I actually just uh, skipped over Ryan in the order that we normally do, just to see what Ryan Scott would do. Hello, Ryan. Everything you're doing is bad. I want you to know that. <laughs> Ryan, you know, people people can't hear you smirking. <laughs> Actually, they can. I can hear that. It's Because yeah. it's just like... <laughs> you get that's like totally a, audible. It's a, li- a, li- a lizard <laughs> smell. <laughs> it sounds like one of Ryan's or uh, Anthony's burps. All right. How are you guys doing? I'm good. We got through the intro. Yeah. That was a tough yeah. one. That yeah. Can hard. we end the show now? Good show, everybody. Well, it was good talking. Yeah. Man, for all the... Th- yeah, let's get talking. We keep, learned so much together. The, well, I'm done. That was great. You yeah. guys did a really good job. Yeah, three years, and we've got the show down to a science. Don't forget so. to give us all your money on Patreon. Yeah, this could basically be just a commercial. Follow me on Twitter. Yeah. Do you guys ever watch Gilmore Girls? No. Yes! So uh, good. Yes. It's such a good show. Okay. I'm so into that show right now. Can we now. go back to ending the show? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't watch Gilmore Girls, but you know what I did watch, Max, the other Buffy. day? A conspiracy theory video on Netflix about aliens... And how they might be running the government. And it was... I, I, like, I like where this is going. We can start the show back up now. Was 9 11 an inside job? What was that one called? It's Gilmore called... Girls. <laughs> I think it's called like the Secret Controllers or something like I that. I think that that's like a like... mockumentary, though. No, this was legit. I mean, it had the. It had was one it done of the by astronaut... that San Francisco guy that carries the sign? The Jesus but it had loves one you? of like the, uh, the nah. Apollo astronauts that did the second <laughs> flight to land on the moon, and he was there talking about cover up shit. But then at one point it gets crazy because it totally is like. If you know, it has all these title cards, like it's developed divided into chapters. And like one chapter is like you know, at first you're like talking about all these instances instances of sightings and stuff like that, and there's like companies like Lockheed Martin talking, you know, and people theorizing that the reason Lockheed Martin made all these crazy progress technologically in a few years was because of alien like, technology of change. You're like, okay, this is all like somewhat fe- <laughs> hold on, this is all somewhat feasible. They got a Stargate like, in, a, in there. In, in a very, but hold on, it's like somewhat feasible, like that they might make a breakthrough in certain technologies. Okay, whatever. Then it gets totally fucked up because it's like, but what, and then it goes to like alien experimentation is the title card. And then it gets to everyone on there is just like, yeah, it's basically the aliens just used crazy technology to make me come. Like, that's what all of these stories turned into. Like, one guy was like, they brought out a crazy box that's and the, they would the insert my... This ain't a government conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> they, they would be like... The, the government pull... conspiracy, the XXX parody. This ain't the X-Files. <laughs> they would pull out my penis and put it in this box and then use a signal... And just pointed at me, and I would just ejaculate into this box. Wow! You know, it was always, and like that's that. how I got so- kicked out of Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> if you're curious to check out this documentary, it's called "The Hidden Hand: Colon Alien Contact and the Government Cover Up." And the cover. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to watch the porno, it's the unhidden hand. It's called <laughs> an alien a goat seeing is believing. An alien the cover conspiracy. of it is literally this really terrible Photoshop of an of a white general with his hand up, saluting himself and half of his face is a gray alien they, just, oh, like, yeah. they should have had an like, alien head coming in from the side like doing a surprise salute <laughs> two other things that i would say about that documentary that everyone should check it out for i don't <laughs> think it a lot but it's because it has fucking incredible alien art in it and by incredible i mean like trapper as keeper. if like imagine like imagine your dad uh, yes it's like imagine your dad decided to paint like there's like this old dude that's like Dude, I've met the aliens so many times, and he just paints them, and they're basically in aliens and blue onesies. The art in it is laughable, and oh, best wow. of all, a lot of the people they get as their credible witnesses are people that are wearing tie-dyed shirts, people that are, like, you know, very fucking <laughs> much, obviously children of the drug age and stuff, so... A hilarious movie. The Hidden Hand Colon. Um, See, if I, if I was doing a documentary about... <laughs> you saw about, the box art? If I was doing a incredible. documentary about aliens, I would tell people to, to not wear tie-dye shirts. That would be my yes. first move. Or, or, yes, exactly. or um, Davy Crockett hats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or Punisher yeah. shirts. I want to talk, talk more about aliens. I think it's really funny that people think that aliens 
people travel millions of years just to help us come. <laughs> <laughs> like that well, seems like that seems like an unnecessary thing to do. Like people, I was thinking about this though, Brian. Why, yeah. What if the the reason they're making us come and taking eggs from they're women, not making us come? They're helping. They're helping us. us come. They're jerking us off. Is, they're not like well, fucking come, and we're like, oh god, you came from space. Fine. They butt fuck us no, too. I think the, the way that yeah. the alien documentary Brian described it. These uh, scientists, Brian, are saying that the aliens literally understand our biology so well they can basically point a thing at us and just make you come. From space? Uh, like right there in front of you. They have tools. They just kind of point it at you and you just Oh, but they, ha- they have to show up here, did, right? Did anyone explain yeah. if you need to be erect to come or can you do it soft? I don't know. See, I, all my- I'm saying is they're, they're light years ahead of us in teledildonics. My friend had a teledildonics. <laughs> wow. I'm sure there's some soft, there's probably, probably some soft comments. My friend Matt had Scoville, a, had that is a real fucking word, by the tele-dildo- way. Teledildonics. No, so it know. isn't. Yes, it is. No, what it is isn't. According to the hidden hand? No, <laughs> teledildonics is a real fucking thing. It's the shit you see, like the underwear that people can use over the internet to like get each other off. That's teledildonics. I'm looking this up. <laughs> God damn it. Oh boy. Time oh, to look oh, up oh, teledildonics. Oh. Clear my search history. I just think it's, it's it's ridiculous that any any species would travel millions of miles for us. Could you imagine so wait, a, a wait, wait, species wait. that doesn't even walk to the like corner we, store for food? Anymore. No, so we found like if we are <laughs> wow, there's a Wikipedia page for that. God if we it. are if we are Matthew McConaughey in Interstellar looking for a different planet, yeah, the first thing that we would do when we when we get there is find a creature and jerk it off. Yeah, like no, as human beings, no, it's not. Let's so, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get it to fucking the, come. The, the way I would compare it is, is let's say let's Travel say that there are to make it let's say there are aliens that are super advanced and high tech and they're and they're and they're fucking they have a cool crystal city somewhere in the other part of the galaxy. <laughs> like they got a bunch they got they live in like Oda Gunga somewhere and like a, a million millions of light years away. So the Mormons. Yeah. Sure. So they got that, but the people who, the, the aliens that are out like all on our end of th- things are like way out in the middle of fucking nowhere. And they're basically like the guys who were who were stuck working out in the middle of fucking Montana, who were like, "Well, there's no one else around. We're bored. Let's let's fuck us that uh, yak over there. Let's, let's make it come. Let's beat off. I mean, it, I, they're like, I don't know. Like, there was a dude a town over from me when I lived in Connecticut who uh, like <laughs> fucked a sheep, and everyone knew about it because he had to pay for the sheep because I think he killed it or something. Like he he fucked up its colon or something. What? what? Yeah. And his name, his last name was like Eustace or something, but everyone's like Eustace because like it was like a sheep, like a lady A-W. sheep. Uh, That's yeah. that was the joke they went with. Uh, no, they went with. The, I would have been like, they, they went use up- the fuck sheep. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, now, now, the, yeah, but I mean, like. That's why I do what I do for a living, and that's why that man fucks sheep. I like to think that if there are aliens out here that are fucking with us, they're like the weird backwoods drunken, like really like stag party, like hunting, like they're they're deliverance aliens. That's <laughs> funny because according to lore, uh, they only no no fuck- lore, lore applies to fantasy. You need uh, it's uh, it's a speculative History. fiction, which is the futuristic stuff. Then shut the fuck up. Yeah, lore is written with a cursive L. Because it's, I hate it's written in tomes. But according to tomes, <laughs> if that's true, if your theory is true, then only it's like co- codexes. If only like uh, flyover planet aliens <laughs> living in the middle of nowhere, they only fuck with the people in our country who live in flyover states. So that's that's a weird sort of continental war there that you have going on. Do they know? Do these are these aliens so smart that they can instantaneously make us come? That they know that nobody will believe anyone they in don't, a flyover state. They don't make us. Flew. No, no, no. So, so they listen. don't make us come. They make like people like Dallas Cowboys fans come. No, no that's so, what I mean. So, that's so, so, like so, if you're a big Broncos dude, like you got a sticker on your car, like an alien's making you come. No, but what I'm saying Look, is, are they so? Smart? I live close to too close to water are for they, an alien one. To are they so hidden hyper- hand my cock? They're so hyper intelligent that they know that nobody will believe the guy. Yeah. Who as a Calvin Dude, if they got a Calvin fucking shirt. if they got a yeah. PlayStation Move controller that they can point at somebody and make them jizz in their pants and then get and then get butt fucked by lasers or whatever, they they can probably figure out who's going to be believed or who isn't. You know, <laughs> look look at it this way: the guy in my a town over from my old town who fucked the sheep, he fucked a sheep. He didn't go into some guy's house and fuck that guy's dog because he had no comment. <laughs> like the, no one's gonna like the sheep is like way off in the in a field somewhere. Like sure. you know, like that's. 
I'm not saying that I understand his actions, but I'm saying I can, I can. No, it's, it's better to, it's, strategically. It's, it's a good plan to space fuck the guy that's like, the Negroes can take our guns with their brains because no one will believe him. <laughs> right. I'd space the, I mean, space fuck the shit out of that guy because he doesn't know anything. <laughs> no, anyone he snitches to can't. Can't explain that. I'm sure to they also. I'm sure they also have a probe that will make you come and shit at the same yeah, time. Exactly. But the thing is, is that is that it actually it seems so far fetched in a way that they would aliens would come here to do that to us. <laughs> but unless they're so far advanced over us that they're just making us their weird experiments is kind of the the point of the documentary. And I see that only because when I was in high school, my high school AP biology teacher, his previous job before he got into teaching was he worked for Foster Farms, and one of his jobs at Foster Farms was to use these straws to blow turkeys to collect semen so that he could test them for virility. That's a, that's a true story. What, what are you talking about? How is that a real sentence? He used straws to blow turkeys? What are they? Oh, I got so they, many questions for you. This right is now. a real thing that this is a real thing that they do at Turkey Farm. They use this weird tube thing on the male turkeys to basically get them off to collect sperm, so they can do like sperm counts and insemination and stuff like that. Suddenly so I'm those, just saying, we do that to turkeys. Uh, aliens, I guess they could come here and do that. To suddenly, us. those Foster Farm commercials with the puppets, how they desperately want to be Foster Farm chickens, makes sense now. Wow, because they all want to get blown by straws. Damn. Wow. Yeah. So we, it was it was an automatic straw. He wasn't like on the other end going, "Give me that fucking turkey." Sperm. I got the impression. I got the impression he was on the other end when he described it to us. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's that's probably the wildest allegation you could possibly throw at a human being. I think there's that, and then there's murder. That would be number one, man. You can't straight up say that a dude blows turkeys with a straw for work. You, you know, can't they, say that shit. That, like, are you just, in terms of HR, you can't have that little of a distance between that's sucking well, that's, that's a, suck you, a turkey's dick they'd have to put like <laughs> some kind of curtain some glory hole situation where they're like yeah your job is to just blow in this pipe here and then on the other side there's some other guy whose job is to you have to take this tube coming out of this wall and put it on the turkey's crotch and they have those guys never talk to each other how many times a day I, does that dude go i would just like to point out I, I would i would just like to point out there's even an episode of dirty jobs where <laughs> they micro, do this exact where micro procedure blows a turkey? i want to see this uh, job description Pretty much. I want to see this Craigslist this, ad. This blow job. <laughs> yeah. Wow, great, so, Max. Yeah. Yeah, really that, you know, that, that guy was a turkey's dick. <laughs> that guy became my science teacher. So I'm just saying that uh, maybe these aliens are are just collecting it because they're just. Uh, Best part of that, know, about man. that story is that at one point in your school's career, they were like, so what was your previous experience? And he was like, I used to suck turkey's dicks through a straw. And they're like, I right, come talk to all these kids about science. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, so you're probably, you're probably going to be okay with a teacher's salary, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is like, yeah. the worst thing a high school kid can tell you is like, fuck off, teacher. Go suck a turkey's dick to a straw. And he's like, mm, I've been there. Dude, think about it. Animal husbandry in our world. Your words are rubber bullets that bounce right off of me. How many times Animal did husbandry have to tell in the... our world is all about fucking getting animals off. Like, How come it's they don't a weird call animal wifing out? <laughs> How many times did he have to tell the turkey, just not on my face? <laughs> uh, so Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, you can get a human lady pregnant with a turkey baster. So sure there's could. a joke in there somewhere. Yeah. So you mean you it. mean this November you when didn't we didn't find it? This November when we all gather around the table <laughs> and carve up some turkey, we might be interacting with a turkey that got head from a dude. <laughs> <laughs> or that's in in case you need a, a little icebreaker at your next family. Get do together. turkeys even have dicks, or do they have like weird inverse cloaca things? Well, they got weird. a dick that fits in. The, you want to insult them more? They got a dick that fits in the straw. All I right. Just, I feel like a turkey's dick looks like that thing that comes out from Gary Oldman's desk in The Fifth Element and chokes on the on the cherry. <laughs> Listen, Anthony didn't say these dudes are getting head through a fire hose. They're getting head through a straw. They got tiny dicks. I didn't it, say it was that size. I mean, if they made like an action figure of Gary Oldman in The Fifth Element, it came with his um, desk accessories. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought I told you guys that story a long time ago. No, 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 no that was a secret in your in your weird recesses of your mind. Yeah, he well, was that's a weird good. Teacher, he had a what lot kind of, of pent up rage. Man, he would snap at us. What kind of science so. did he? Teach? You you think he would fucking snap at you? He spent ten years sucking a turkey's dick, and now he's got to listen to a bunch. Hey, of man, what the fuck? He didn't suck a turkey's dick. He sucked a hundred <laughs> turkey dicks. 
It's not like it was him and one turkey and they sucked each other's dicks for years. And then one day that turkey died. He probably had to suck a new dick every day. It's probably like every day he's like, what happened to that turkey yesterday? And they're like, you fucking ate him at, at lunch. All right, here's eight uh. new turkeys. Go suck their dicks. Anthony. Yep, there's definitely some turkey coming those dicks. Next. What, what kind of science do you teach? Uh, biology and anatomy. <laughs> okay. So. But today we're talking yeah. about the turkey. And next week we're talking about the turkey. <laughs> That's all we're talking yeah. about this year. One, I'm sorry, week, guys. I, I think one week, I remember one week in class, he uh, brought in a bunch of fruit and made hobo wine to teach us about fermentation. So that gives you a taste of what my school was like. Wow. wow. Did I ever tell you guys yeah. about my... Um, so this dude's definitely buried in a forest somewhere. Did I ever tell you guys about my, 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 my school in Connecticut that I went to for a year? The, the agriculture department was bigger than like the rest of the school. Really? Yeah. So it was all it was all farm school stuff. It was all like build a cow out of parts or whatever. And they had an they had an aquaculture class, which was growing fish. And aquaculture, in the same way that like, God, what's what's the in the same way that like like stoners will like gravitate towards like maybe ceramics of like the art department, you know? Yeah. Uh, nerdy kids and like and smart asses would basically gra- gravitate towards aquaculture versus all the <laughs> other aggy stuff you could do. And so there was like a bunch of my a bunch of my dorky friends all all raised tilapia, which are freshwater bass. Um, but that class was just like a bunch of kids just like fucking off. And like when you raise fish, you I think you pretty much like they're like farming fish is kind of like having fish as pets. You kind of s- sort of get the ball rolling and then you kind of hang out for a minute. Like you don't really have to do a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as you don't poison the fish, you're you're they're probably going to do okay. Um, but they just, they had the big mouth billy bass in that classroom and they would just like stab it with pens and shit. And one day it, uh, it fell in the, in the fish tank and the, and the fish would, would swim. By. Where, where was it? Where did it fall from? It was like above the fish tank and it was, I think the batteries died and like, <laughs> what? so they'd like, they'd be like stabbing it with pens. Like Wait, that. I mean, you're talking about one of those electronic yeah. fish? Yeah. You know, those, baby, take me to the river. <laughs> but like oh. the, the fucking, the, it wasn't an actual fish. No, 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 no. It was, okay. a, big, it was a big, it was a big, first of all, big, that is, a big that mouth. shit is like getting, it's like getting a knock, knock <laughs> joke uh, tattooed on you. <laughs> <laughs> like putting that on your wall is one of the dumbest things you could do. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a, a, a fish a fish class like the, it was a school of, fi- of fish growing <laughs> oh, a school of fish yeah. shut up um, but they would they would just do I mean they do they do weird stuff in there like they they, they stabbed this fucking this fake fish with pens a whole lot and it was hanging up above there <laughs> and I think they waited till it's it uh, it's batteries died and so like you'd walk up to it and it would just turn to them and just be like. Uh. <laughs> and it would just stay like staring at them, and then I think they eventually just like they put it in the in the water with the with all the fish they were raising with all these pens sticking out of it. So there's this like this fake this fake like bent at a right angle rubber fish. Hey, tilapia, it is gonna be yeah. you. If you don't take care of that thing. They probably I had like about. battery acid all over it, and then they had like I had to go to some. uh like an a ag funeral, like an ag fair where it was like a science fair, <laughs> a but it was funeral. So it was like, hey, look, the 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 actual kids who are going to wind up on farms, like they they bred sheep, and they're like, here's an actual sheep. Oh, like they they fucking they pulled stabbed its, that with pins. They pulled its wool. No, because they were like reasonable people as opposed to my fucking weird no, metalhead friends who were just, like, let's stab them. It. Yeah, they might they might have fucked it. John, but, you, uh, the fish guys, <laughs> they did uh they did like <laughs> Japanese fish prints where you like. You take a dead fish and you like roll paint on it and then like use it as basically like a big rubber stamp. But it's, if, if the fish are dead, does, doesn't that like mean pussy? they failed the class? No, <laughs> it was one that they killed with pens, probably. Okay, <laughs> okay. I don't know, but that was like that. That's reuse and recycle. A, public schools in places where people we had a, we had a bass in our public school. We just fed it pen caps and would watch it eat the pen caps and fucking erasers and then spit them out. That was our entertainment. I feel like if you go Man. on if you go on like iTunes and look around, you could probably find a game about stabbing a talking fish with pens, just with all the weird shit that's on there. Yeah, ridiculous fishing. Yep. <laughs> that was just like four straight minutes of just fucking horrible garbage. <laughs> <laughs> just so we talked about sucking turkeys' dicks I, for like was, ten minutes. There was something like uh, poetic and rhythmic about that. Yeah. Yours was just like they stabbed. Yeah, yours is like a, a weird Texas Chainsaw Massacre that went straight to Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've wait. seen some shit. <laughs> uh, um, so Ryan, you had told me the uh, prior to us recording 
<laughs> that you that you're you'd uh, been getting some quality family time in, you know. Goddamn right. Um, Invite yeah. the boy over. Yeah. Sit him down. So we uh put up yeah. a chart of a naked woman. <laughs> said yeah. you ever seen one of these? Pointed it and said just it touched anything here. Just any <laughs> literally any part of it's fine. I don't care where or when or play, or put pin the pussy why? on the Paula. <laughs> Draw a picture of a dick on the place where you put the dicks on air, this picture of a woman. If you're new to the show, Ryan Scott's dad's basically the polar opposite of Ryan Scott. Ryan Scott's dad is Goddamn right. A metalhead. Ride a motorcycle, mm. fuck a girl. No, nah, it's fine. some Jim Bean, it's fucking fog, punch Jim Bean. Foghorn, leghorn, and the little chicken eat it. <laughs> yep. I, I take after my dad in many ways. Uh, oh, in name <laughs> only. <laughs> in, just, in distancing yourself from each other. <laughs> so, yeah, we went to visit my parents recently. Accidentally. And, um, my, my 17, 72 year old father. Got a, don't sound a day over fifty. He's seventy two. Yeah, yeah. Has um started growing weed. You're goddamn right. Oh, huh. You <laughs> fucking snitch. <laughs> <laughs> you come on this popular ass podcast and you snitch about this shit. I feel a little bit a little Ryan, bit hurt. I said you you were not allowed the, to talk the, about before this. Before this, we were in the we were in the corner store. We were picking out seltzer uh-huh. for our drinks, and, uh-huh. you, and you came up. I got a story to tell. I think you're going to like it especially. Yeah. Because apparently I'm the fucking token pothead on this show. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I My- <laughs> fucking knew it. This guy, he's been at- calling you for video game advice for years. <laughs> and this is, he, this he is puts very, very you. recent. Yeah, no, it's very recent. He started growing it, but he's been smoking it his whole life. Hey, goddamn he, right. Well, he says he's not smoking it, which I believe him because my mom would be like, he is too. Is he vaping he- it? What he's doing, he has he has like a pot card. Okay? Yeah. Okay. And like, so he's growing it, and I guess what he, <laughs> what he told me he did was I can't he, believe this. He he made he found some recipe online, and he made butter. <laughs> Oh, he made weed this butter. So, this oh, is weed so butter. Cute. Yeah. So your dad can fucking cook better than you can. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, undoubtedly. Really? Ab- oh, my dad. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my dad can cook. My dad is a kick-ass cook. I know that it sounds really surprising to you, Ryan, but the reason they use butter or oils and stuff is that uh, THC is fat-soluble, so it's like one of the best ways to convey it. Hey, hey thanks, done. man. Thanks for the cool tip. <laughs> <laughs> so. but, my, but he's doing that. I mean, he's 72. Put another notch on the hula hoop, bro. He has arthritis <laughs> in his hands. He's got like a, a messed up leg. Uh-huh. You know, like From my, fighting and fucking. Does he have tall man problems? He, he I, well, I, well, I don't know what that is. Yeah, Ryan, you don't even listen to this show. You can't even fucking keep up. We talk about tall man problems. I don't remember what we talked about. Probably hurt his tonight. leg climbing up into his car, otherwise known as the Grave Digger. I did, have I ever told you about how he, he screwed up his leg? That's no, another no. story. You're I not, dared you're not... Bigfoot to race me in a foot race, and he fucking ran right over my leg. I know how he hurt his neck, though, was uh, shaking it in disappointment. His <laughs> only son. No, my dad, he got in a motorcycle accident back in his 20s and broke his leg. Healed back wrong. He did. It, could, it never it didn't heal right. He never dealt. with He walked it. it off. He well, yeah. And then, but he had to have it like <laughs> he never bo- dealt with it. Yeah, that's what it. He had to have the bone reset like five years ago. Did he have to blow in the cartridge? <laughs> no. <laughs> he just had to have him break his leg again, heal the right way. Yeah, my bone I like reset. Like I like I told, like he told, broke his leg by accident. I feel like knowing your dad, which I don't. I feel like he probably did it to be cool on purpose. Goddamn right. Hey, check this out. Pretty awesome, right? <laughs> so, um, I had the bone reset like I wish I could reset my boner inside my wife's vagina when we made this disappointment over here. <laughs> so did he pass you the fucking blunt or what? <laughs> no. Would you get high with your dad? No. Really? Yeah, but you, you well, know that never, I don't. You know when I said Lego my ego and I handed you that waffle covered in butter? <laughs> okay, let's say, high. let's say, let's say that if it, he's, hyper- he's like, look, here's my weed butter. And I'm like, that looks disgusting. It That's, does. Yeah. It does look like it, it looks like a, it's just like in the fridge. It looks like a prop I, from a, from a, an early Peter Jackson movie. But he, the reason well, he's. Well, regular butter also looks like there was an old haunting from a ghoul. <laughs> No, um, Ryan, let me ask you this. The and reason I, he's doing it is for pain management, basically. Yeah. But it's, it's just funny that he's like, so... You I'm know what I some... used to use for pain management? Would you, my left and my right. Would you eat a pot cookie with your dad? No. Why? It's what if dad. you did it by accident? I know you wouldn't do it with us because we're not your but real friends. But it's a friends. pot cookie. 
So what? I wouldn't do that. It's a plant that grows. Oh, have you it's ever? A plant. Have you ever did pot? <laughs> That's right. Have I ever did pot? <laughs> did you ever do pot? <laughs> have I ever did pot? Have you ever done? Was that a real sentence? Or would you, you, you ever did pot? I never did the pot. No. Yeah, but did you ever do the marijuana? I n- <laughs> you wouldn't take a small nibble of a pot cookie for your father on his deathbed. Nah. What if you fucked up your shit? On his shit? deathbed? Come on. He's what like, if- oh, my dying wish. Just, just take a bite. No, I don't think that's going to You wouldn't happen. do your father's dying wish? I don't think that would be his dying what wish. What if your dad's dying no. wish was to suck a turkey's dick through a straw? I would have to deny him that. I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? It's a dying wish. <laughs> right, my dying <laughs> wish is for you to suck a turkey's dick through a pot cookie. Ha ha, there was weed in that turkey, little bitch. <laughs> and then he dies. Ryan, <laughs> it's funny that this is what your dad's doing, because my dad just finished construction of his hydroponics garden. So, wow. it, so yeah, he's, he's, he asked me what he should grow in it, because he doesn't know yet. He's getting catfish, and the catfish Rutabagas. swims. The catfish swim in the hydroponics garden, and their <laughs> shit is what fertilizes the plants. It's you very can stab them with setup. pens, and it's funny. Are we talking about hydroponic weed? <laughs> My dad, my dad doesn't know what he's going to grow in it. He's like, I made a hydroponics garden. To Your dad grow needs to herbs. talk to Ryan Scott's dad. They need to start their own. Yeah, I'll, talk that. I'll talk that. Dude. Exactly. That's Get what I'm thinking. On. Put a fucking microphone in front of us. To talk about the good old days. It's Shoot, weird. Wow. It's, like, it's like both of your fathers <laughs> need new hobbies uh, since they can't beat you guys anymore. <laughs> For being such huge disappointments. My dad just is actually worst. just like like Ryan's maybe in some way. Like since my dad retired, my dad's just always looking for things to do. So he does need hobbies. So and like Ryan's dad probably so he's doing gets better a than you. Bit, a little bit of yeah, a little <laughs> bit of like gardening, you know, sort of experience out of make growing his pot and stuff like that, and also the the satisfaction of like helping himself through pain, which obviously I, I totally get that. My great grandma, till the day she died, made alcohol rubs out of pot. For her arthritis. Um, what? Wait, what? You can make alcohol out of pot? What? <laughs> alcohol rubs. Like, she would take, like, she would take, like, like you know, some type of really strong alcohol and soak it with, like, pot and stuff alcohol like that. Alcohol rubs sounds rubs. like a blues musician. I feel like you could put this episode <laughs> on the learning channel and people wouldn't blink a fucking eye. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so, wait, Dude, right, I, that should be a thing. Pot dads? <laughs> Just a bunch of... <laughs> it sounds like it is a thing. We got two of them right here. Sweet, Ryan. Look at it, it's TLC's THC hour. No. It's funny that th- it's funny that the two dads that would do this too have two sons that are like, nah, no pot. <laughs> Ryan, does, oh, <clears throat> do, does your mom get high with your dad now? She's tried it once. I mean, she has. I mean, her own pains and stuff too. But she, I don't know if that's. <laughs> Heaven you, you. Well, no, I didn't, Heaven you, know. you is my son. <laughs> my parents, my my aunt is like a double cancer survivor, and they're trying. You know, like that's the reason he's doing this is just because they're. They're just getting old, and he says it really helps. Yeah, I mean, I so yeah. You watch yeah, it? it's it's pot. It gets you high. I'm sure. I'm sure it helps. Do you guys share a Netflix Netflix account? Because it's going to get fucked up in a no. couple of weeks. I know. No, so, he says that he's, he's, a couple times, like before bed, he's, you know, he'll like eat some toast and like yeah, go to bed. And that's a reasonable thing to do. It helps. Yeah, I mean, that's oh, good. I just you, thought buddy. it was funny that like every like the last few times I've been out, he's like, check out my pot plants. Look how much it's growing, and I'm like, what are you doing? He's growing it himself. That's really I, I really admire that. Well, somebody, my my um. Well, where does he live though, Ryan? He lives in the Central Valley. He lives near all the big exactly. pot plants. That, that's my point, is that he lives yeah. in the Central Valley. You're not going to find good pot down there, Brian. He's got to grow it himself if he wants anything worth a damn. Oh, I'm sure it's the pot garbage. he grew up with in, on, in the Easy Rider days was fucking <laughs> yeah. dirt, the hell, dirt yeah. and rocks sold the by the Hells Angels a dude not. with half a leg. It didn't have brown out. He's like, I'll fucking smoke whatever you hand me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smoking dirt over at Altamont. So you guys are talking about like your your dad's being like kind of bored and and not needing like things to do. Um, my dad was he, he was trying to do like he, he tried to do lacrosse. He's like sixty Wait, something. Did your dad and my dad have a Freaky Friday switch? Wow. I don't know. Was what is was your dad a lacrosse player? No, I don't know. It just sounds like something my cartoon character totally version white. of myself would be doing. Oh. Well, my yeah, I'm my... going to try lacrosse. Lacrosse nah. is dangerous as hell. I don't know why anybody does that. Sport. That's like a yeah. That's a that's a that's a violent. That's like hockey without pads. That's basically how white people in high school get their cum aggression out. It's lacrosse. That's the entire. Can that's you, why you Brian, don't hear about people or... over the age of twenty five playing lacrosse. Well, you don't can hear you about a lot of people person? over the age of sixty doing it. But my dad tried to do that. And then can he... you what, Anthony? 
Sorry, go ahead, Max. Finish your story. He like he was fucking he was running and he just heard like a loud snapping noise in his in his knee and so he had to stop doing that and then uh, that's like a week later he found out he had cancer not knee cancer but just he was at the doctor for his lacrosse injury and then they were like you have cancer and he was like oh well jeeper is great and then classic insult to injury you know <laughs> and then uh you know like it's it's fucking it's california so like you you find out someone has cancer and like three people are like hey man i got a pot card let me help you out with that and like so like all of my fucking step siblings just brought like fucking trick or treat bags full of weed to the house and they were like hey you should have this and he was like i don't i don't i'm already fucking and like when you're on when you have cancer they put you on so much shit already like he was like out of it constantly because he's you're on fucking chemotherapy you know well a lot of that see that's a problem with uh like pot culture in general is that we gave them an inch and they took a mile like they think that they think that pot is nature's medicine when really nature's medicine is uh, medicine. <laughs> it, people, people are just like, hey, man, I heard you're, there was a beheadings. You should get a American, American water card because then you can, <laughs> you you can just toke, toke out whenever you want. And it's like, no, I mean, yeah, pot's great for people who have like uh, – Disappointments for sons. Glau- glaucoma or physical injuries or diff- disappointments for sons. But for some people, it's like also go to the doctor. Get the pot card because it will help you sleep. But then yeah. also – go to the doctor well he was on like just massive amounts of like the the fucking there's the chemo which makes you sick and then there's the anti anti queasy medication that you take on top of that which the side effect of that is that it's agonizing pain so you take painkillers on top of that and then there's like you what, get what game of rock paper scissors is this fucking no, cancer wow. ryan Fucking it is. You take, you take a weird cocktail, like, and then like, you here's hulk the out, thing man. that makes you not queasy, and here's the thing that makes that's, you not have pain that's from the queasy modern medicine. Stuff. And so then Jesus. my fucking my stepbrother who produced the Aliens documentary comes up and he's like, "Hey, we got all this fucking pot." He's that's like, a shocker. <laughs> these, are, these are vape pens. This one makes you awake, and this one makes you sleepy. And my dad's just like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go sit down over here." And my um. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was like everyone was kind of like, let's all – the pot is great for cancer. And it's like cancer sucks like on its own, like period. No one – just – pot's going to just make it take longer. It's going to slow it down. Another thing good for cancer is uh, chemo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd start there. Uh, and you know, then move, funny, uh, move back as we're to sitting here, As we're sitting uh, here having this talk, Max, I can't help but feel like when I think about the hobbies and stuff my dad keeps trying to do in his side projects, <laughs> I feel like – in many ways, my dad is is you in like twenty years. Because like for a while, my dad was like, "I'm gonna uh, hold on, hear me out, Max. I see that look." But like my dad <laughs> bought a forge because he wanted to make swords and start blacksmithing. Yeah, he just had free time. And then he told me about how he was going to buy this chariot edition for his bicycle so he could link dogs to it like a chariot and have his dogs pull him like he's in a chariot. Wait, like so all these what, things that I'm wait. like. And then he, Dude, sat down, then he sat down and watched Robocop every day for every hour I'm of sorry, every day for two weeks. But aside from the fucked up <laughs> knees and the cancer, getting old sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. If I can just get a pot card and grow weed and play video games and make dog chariots and swords. All day. That's basically like being a seventy-year-old Muppet baby. <laughs> yes, my dad. My dad's talking about that, and then my dad's talking about uh, adopting a donkey just because he thinks it'd be really. Co- my dad thinks it'd be really cool to own a donkey. Does he, so just, he just want to become one of those ceramic figures in a stone garden? Uh, yeah. just sleep all day. Is he posing for a pound of coffee? Wait, wait, wait. No. So hold on, hold on. So he wants the dogs to pull his bicycle. What's he gonna do with the fucking donkeys? What kind of fucked up farm is with this? It? Like, all right, the horse is my banker and the cow is my wife, and the dogs pull the donkey. We're gonna car. get a bunch of monkeys and a bunch of zookeeper outfits, and the monkeys. Monkeys are actually going to run the zoo. Hold on, it's let me talk to my lawyer about all this. He's a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he bit me. Let's go ahead with this. Oh my! Well, my God. dad, my dad specifically found a, a place in California that it's going to sound so stupid. We bought rescued, a zoo. They rescue donkeys. So. <laughs> from what? From what? <laughs> from, from from fucking <laughs> falling asleep? Ter- 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 no, from turning back into little boys. There you go, <laughs> Specif- yeah. So specifically, what they rescue donkeys from is like. There are places like maybe people that have them where they uh, aren't feeding them and stuff like that, so they get taken by animal control, and then animal control. How can you not feed a donkey? He eat trash. (laughs) Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's pretend that one of us made a really good Shrek joke. Why is there a donkey rescue? 
because uh, that's what I'm saying. These uh, donkeys are gigantic animals, and so when animal c- control gets called in, thank you for explaining in, that. <laughs> well, hold on, what I'm saying when animal control gets called in to say like a house where like maybe it's a farm that people have had for like you know 50 years, but they're they've gone broke and they're going to lose the land. They haven't been feeding their animals, or they foreclose, or people move out of the house and they just leave a donkey behind, and they're like, what "The fuck do we do with this?" So they can either kill it or they can get it to a rescue. I think that's, that's why a pretty I s- sweet prank would be if you were if you were getting your house foreclosed upon by the bank. You went out and got a donkey and you put it inside one of the walls, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so then like people come in and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna buy this house for our our son Skyler. It's going to raise him here, and our our newborn's on the way. Her I've name heard is of, I've heard her about name that. is Madison, and we're gonna raise our kids here. They're gonna go to a Waldorf school, and then in the middle of that, they hear." Aah! From inside the walls, and they they get scared. A lot know? of people leave their donkeys behind, which is why my Seven Eleven started a new initiative. It's it's a small tray they put on the counter. It says, "Take a donkey, leave a donkey." <laughs> and sometimes on your way out, you have a few extra donkeys, and you just slide a few into the tray. But sometimes you're a few donkeys short, so you take some with you. I feel like it's a viable way to get rid of donkeys and gain new donkeys when you need donkeys. <laughs> Who so. the fuck leaves a donkey behind? How much is it that there's a I almost said burrow, but how much of it is it that there's actually a place of significance where people come to work with like, you know, another man moved and left the donkey behind today. That seems like a fluke accident. That's like a store that sells pianos. Like how many pianos are you really selling? You're probably selling three pianos a year. How many people need yeah, pianos? I mean, they're probably adopting like two donkeys a year. You're right. But, but my that's dad. That's not does... a business. That's a hobby. You can't have a it's whole place open. It's not a business. Open. It's a nonprofit. But my dad really wants damn to get right, a donkey. It's a nonprofit. There's no it's money a, in that. <laughs> it's a nonprofit. My but dad not wants to choice. get a donkey and a couple of goats and just and now he has chickens. <laughs> like he's slowly fight. but surely, you know, he just I don't know. He's finding ways to occupy his time. Just weird ways. Is well, he gonna ride donkey. it? No, my dad literally just wants it because he thinks it. It. This is why I'm saying he's like Max. My dad just gets an idea in his head that he thinks would be cool. <laughs> and then he just wants to do it, right? And just in the same way that's like... That would be cool. You know, exactly. And my dad's just like, owning a donkey would be cool. You know what's so my dad's cool? just like, I want to get a donkey because it would be cool. And then, and then the next cool. day he's like, nachos. Yeah, yeah, nachos. So the thing that I want to do lately is is uh, I'm going to build dioramas of American history <laughs> moments, but they're going to be really inaccurate. <laughs> so they're like just I got all going to have dinosaurs in I them. got a bunch of miniatures of little knights and a miniature covered wagon, and I want to put up this little diorama where the covered wagon has knights all over it, and they're all riding together, and it just says, I want to make like a little placard this is um, the founding of america <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get a letter from the head of etsy and he's gonna be like i'm sorry we have enough of these <laughs> um please, we gotta shut please, this shit down please leave this is a violation of our terms of service hey, anthony my dad all my dad does you know is he 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 calls me to ask when the next assassin's creed is coming out <laughs> pretty much you know yeah, yeah. well my dad, no doesn't play, my dad has a hard time playing video games, so instead and then he he's goes, just, "How come they don't make more of them? These don't they, they don't they're over, and then they come out. You have to wait a whole year for the next one." Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we got weird parents. I guess that's the bottom line of all that shit. All right, um, cool. Um, should I hit up a couple of questions for y'all? Or yeah, you... quickly. Let's do a couple. Okay. Tony says, "Cool, Ryan Scott." What are you doing with all the money bank in the bank from Patreon? Um, nothing yet. Yeah, I don't know. That's not cool, Ryan Scott. That's regular Ryan Scott. Yeah, what's, that's what's exactly cool, what I was thinking. What's cool, Ryan Scott, going to do with all the money from Patreon? Oh, oh what's cool? Um, if you need them. Yeah. Yeah, what would you do if you were a millionaire? Put on these sunglasses. What would I do? That was yeah, not yeah. the question. Put on these sunglasses. Hold on. Put them on. No, no, no. Put them over your, your yeah. regular. Yeah. Now yeah, we still cool want you to Scott. see. Hey, cool, Ryan Scott. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I got the intro to Bad to the Hold Bone on, playing in my head right now. Transformation taking place yet? <laughs> <laughs> on the day I was born. Hey, cool, Ryan Scott. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you need wow. to watch this on video, you're turning over. into your father. <laughs> Yeah. How do you? I'm like, I can't believe it. you don't need to just stop adjusting them. There's nothing to look at. It's an audio show. <laughs> they can. Cool, Ryan Scott. What would you do if you had a million dollars? Wherever I want. <laughs> <laughs> cool, Ryan my Scott. Theme song. Hey, cool, cool, Ryan Scott. If you could have sex with any three women at the same time, who would one of them be? My wife. <laughs> cool, Ryan Scott is an honorable <laughs> man. Wow. Hey, cool, Ryan Scott. What? What? Um, w- What's your favorite Terminator movie? 
That I don't even know if I can answer that. One of the first two. <laughs> They're both good. Cool, Ryan Scott. Second one, probably. The answer is two. Yeah. Well, George Thorogood would ag- first one would agree that it's thoroughly good. The first cool, one. Ryan Scott. You're walking down the street. <laughs> you're walking down the street and you see a skateboard for free. Take it or break it. Break it. <laughs> get that. Get that out of here. What cool, Ryan it? Scott. If you could live inside an arcade cabinet, which one would it be? Afterburner. That's a pretty good one. That's a roomie. <laughs> <laughs> Street Fighter. <laughs> cool, Ryan Scott. How much would you sell cigarettes for if you had a store? <laughs> um, I don't know. That would depend on supply and demand. <laughs> hey, fiscally responsible, Ryan Scott. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> you take off the glasses for this one? Yeah, well... He summoned me. Um, okay. What um, What are you going to do with all that Patreon money? We're going to... Well, you can't have that. You can't have that music on Fiscally Responsible, Ryan Scott. Scott, you're bracing it for the... the... No, put on the NBC Nightly News music. Oh. <laughs> We're going to put it toward the company. I mean, what do you... Okay, I have, I have a question for you. What do you do with the money that you get from your job? <laughs> There, there. That's my answer. There we go. All that yeah. person really wanted to hear you say was like, spend it on hookers and blow or something. Hook, hookers, right? hey, cool Ryan, hooker, hookers and, and blow. Cool there Ryan Scott. Dank and rubbers. Cool Ryan <laughs> Scott, I'm summoning you. Put the glasses back on for one God. last round. All right, you, you get one question. Cool Ryan Scott, what time yeah. is the best time for sex? Anytime. <laughs> all right all right that was good that was another right. round of cool ryan scott um, there we go you did it you are pretty cool when you put on those sunglasses <laughs> i don't know how it happens you transform cool ryan a completely scott, different person. my panties are soaked <laughs> how did you do that that was beautiful next question john says what's the greatest gift you ever received life greatest gift oh the, the gift of head from a turkey a cool dick i don't know what's the best gift i ever received this show yeah this show friendship yeah. who gave that to you actually i would say that this this show is a good answer only because it was very unexpected when scott got <laughs> laid off and stuff i think i was kind of like well i guess all that's done that was just yeah. kind of where my mind went and i was like it's just done i guess we'll see what happens next in life and so i didn't expect to have anything go on afterwards oh, yeah. so when totally. people proposed it i was like really we're gonna there's, try and there's, do a, this? there's a poem called The Tree Grows in Brooklyn. <laughs> and it's about how trees can grow in the most unlikeliest of Brooklyn. Such as college students' <laughs> closets yep. where they got lights <laughs> put in there and shit. Sometimes there's a crack in the street in the cement and the, uh, there's a leaf that grows through it. It's a given tree. And the cement was Scott's, Scott getting laid off and the tree is the show. Yep. And then uh, dogs have peed on that tree for like four years. <laughs> <laughs> that is the life's greatest no, gift. No, there's a homeless man uh, I think living the, underneath it panhandling. Yeah. I think the greatest gift that I've ever got was half a raccoon wearing a Hawaiian shirt and some sunglasses. You're welcome. Yeah, that was technically a gift based on this show, too. So <laughs> Yeah. The, that was like a sequel to the show. Yeah. But it's a an a- dead animal that, yeah. Yeah. Was the greatest good. gift you've ever gotten was a dead animal. That and probably the Half Super, a dead Super Nintendo was really good. <laughs> that was good. That was a good gift. Yeah, Nintendo was pretty sweet. Yeah, the, like that. The, uh, Nintendo, I won a contest in Nintendo Power once. I got Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 2. What? Or whatever. That, that wasn't a gift, though. That was a prize. Whatever the year was. That's kind of a gift. No, prize it is a gift. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, if we want to talk about prizes, we won. I got some Nickelodeon Green Slime Shampoo from Double Dare Calling Contest. I bought a That's used copy of a, of a Kim Wilde record that someone else won. It had a sticker that said, this was won by someone on KMEL. All right. Yeah, I didn't win it. Rennell probably gave that away with the morning zoo crew. Rennell was probably 12 when that happened. I won a TV in elementary school. What? Really? In a, in a raffle. So yeah. I got to get that George Thorough get back. Did you feel like a badass? I don't know. I was like, cool, I got a TV in my room now. God, you what makes it in you your excited, room? Ryan? Fuck. Yeah, my parents already had a TV. What? What makes you get really excited besides money? I feel like money gets Metal Ryan gear. excited. Oh, Metal Gear. That'll Metal Gear is pretty exciting. Ryan Scott's middle name is Money Over Everything. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? Ryan, Money Over Everything, Scott. What gets me really excited. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you, it gives you a little tickle down there. His second middle name that's, is... That's not, that's not what he meant. Oh, you, almost, you did tickle him. That's not don't what tickle. he meant. I don't... I don't yeah, what gets don't you excited Stop tickling anymore. me down there. What, what makes you happy? 
When was the last time you were like jumping for joy excited? Besides April. For me, it was like when I found that I was going to Tokyo for 10 days. I was jumping around my apartment excited. I feel yeah. like you asked <laughs> April to marry you probably, and she was like, yes, and you were like, cool. I'll buy. I like mean, that I t- you guys know me. I tend to be pretty, like, kind of reserved. low-key. Yeah. You get, you get excited field. as fuck about Metal Gear. Well, I mean, if I, if you get me talking about something that I, I like and I know a lot about, like, I'll I'll keep babbling on until you tell me to shut up. I love that about I love But, like, that. you know, as far as just be like, oh, my God, like like some crazy person. Like, I never, you know, even even my mother-in-law, she's like, he doesn't, he, ne- he never, he, he's just, like, cool. He's cool. No matter what, fun. like, at Christmas, I'll be like, oh, cool you got me thanks you know like i don't yeah, get boy, like boy. super like oh boy you, know, you got me gum I, you're, I, you're, I, you're passionless that's not true i just tend to not well i when i overreact about things i overreact about stupid things because i'm mad that's yeah all. so that actually that's very true you're very animated when you're angry about something but, but you're it's never, always about something stupid but there's yeah but there's never like a happy version of that there's never like oh my god i'm so excited about this yeah there is I'm telling you, when I was playing Metal Gear, when I was playing through all those games, you were you were like hopping around. We'd be going out for pizza or something. You guys would be walking ahead. And Ryan would be like, "Hey, hey, did you play Peace Walker did you beat, yet? Did you beat Metal Gear Solid Four yet? Did you beat Four? Did you beat Four? Oh, I guess you're right. You're right. <laughs> I, that's the voice. That's the one. Yes. It's, it's like, hey, 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 hey. Did you Smash Brothers yet? Did you look at this? Uh? You're tall. Did you Ryan beat likes four to yet? do that. And then I think the other thing that gets Ryan excited, and this is something a lot of people probably don't know, <clears> is Ryan oh gets God. excited and delights in the pleasure in the the uh, failings of other people so like when ryan can call out something like hey did you know that, th- did you know that thing you're a part of they did something really fucking stupid what do you think about that wasn't it really fucking stupid come on they did this isn't that fucking stupid and you're like i know it's stupid fuck man what do you want me to say to you about what? it and you're like yeah but why do you think they would do such a stupid fucking thing and you're like fuck i don't know ryan fuck off like what what if i what give me an example I feel like that wouldn't make me seem to, like a very terrible person. We only have to look so far, or like you know, even if it's not something we did, it might be like, "Hey, did you read that article by so and so? Weren't they fucking retarded?" And you're like, "I guess it was kind of bad." Yeah, but did you see the part with their others? They're fucking idiots. Did you see how everyone railed on them because they're fucking idiots? And you're just like, "Jesus, Ryan." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> just do like, like the sh- the Yeah, yeah. yeah. sometimes. So. That's shooting and fruit. I'm pretty excited right now. Really? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. He's laughed yeah. a lot. Can't you tell in my voice? Pumping cocks. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know why I said that. That's a weird thing to just throw out there. All right, well. Sucking um, turkey whistles. Now it's there. It's just laying there on the table. Okay. It made a well. mess. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next week for more tales of cool Ryan Scott. And yeah. uh, probably uh, we'll teach you about how to blow other animals <laughs> on turkeys. And, uh, teach you about just frogs kidding. next week. None of that. None of that. Tortoises. But, uh, thank you. We, next week thank we you find so the rare snail pets. Nine-tailed foxes. Nine-tailed thank you so foxes. much for and listening. Giraffes. Next like week t- you'll get, in the next episode, I have a couple cool stories to tell. So you'll get to hear that. And we're going to answer a shit ton of questions. So... Oh. Mostly uh, questions about condoms, <laughs> condangs, <laughs> condoms. But, bondoms. But uh, remember, we're all on Twitter. I'm at Chef Money. Scott is at Scott underscore Bromley. Ryan is at Rydog. Max is at Mexicoville. And Brian is at Agent Bizzle. We also do a bunch of shit on the internet. Uh, our little podcast here has a website, comedybutton.com, where you can go pick up uh, all kinds of cool merchandise, such as the new shirt that we launched, which was... Straight from Max's art book that you may have heard from previous episode, his I Threw Up in Church shirt. Straight from a toilet, straight now. back in your ass. Yeah. yeah. We also just launched our <laughs> our uh, Voltron spinoff, uh, you know, the Defenders of the Raccooniverse. Parody. Parody. Yes. This ain't oh, sorry, Voltron parody. XXX. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're right, Ryan. Covered sorry. by parody law. <laughs> it is a parody of of sort of that that theme of Voltron, and it's the Defenders of the Raccooniverse poster that we had up on our Patreon page, now for sale from the awesome Panda Musk. Um and then, uh, you know, of course, you should go to patreon.com slash comedy button where you can go and support us. We've now put up our uh, two free episodes for our uh, our backers. They're backer exclusive. So if you're not one of the well, under 3,000 people who are, yeah, exactly. If there you're not one of more. the less than 3,000 people who are getting that hot content, head on over to rubbers.org slash magnums. That's magnums with a Z. Get yourself <laughs> so. some jelly skins. But yes, get those episodes. Number. Get those episodes because they will be disappearing when? November we 17th. Keep, they're going to be up for a month. So, yeah. I mean, so. you get them as long you get the episodes 
that we do in the period where you are backing us. Yeah, it essentially I'd is how it goes. I've been, I've been explaining it to people. Like, think of it like Loot Crate or something. When you sign up for that month, you get that stuff for that month, and the next month you exactly you pay and you get a whole new box of goodies. Right. So, or like mm-hmm. a magazine subscription. Like the magazine comes to your house, and then that's it. Yep. I, yeah, or, I it's don't, in, or it's in the store briefly, and then eventually the cover gets taken down. Like you fold, and you right. roll it into a tube, and then you you make trumpet noises through it. Yeah, think about it like if you work at a if you work at a place it. where they give you turkeys and straws, and you get to suck their their cocks every, every yeah. day. Right. Now, you're not going to suck the old turkey cocks for the same uh, salary you get. Brian, you get new turkeys with new cocks every speaking, single month. Speaking of of disgusting fowl. We we are we are also launching a D two the Mighty Ducks commentary. Yes, we are. Quack, wow, that was quack, a quack. really good segue. Uh, I thought you were going to. Uh, I don't know where I thought you were going with that. Yeah. That was good though. I they, like that. They, yeah. We are we are launching that. When are we launching that on Monday? That'll be next. Yeah, next week. Next, Monday next, probably. Yeah, Monday. I, and I made a trailer. Uh, you, that is not a Patreon exclusive. Although if you do donate at the ten dollar level, you can. That will be given to you for uh, as part of your pledge for free I plus guess. all the other so, goodies you get yeah above plus it. all the other goodies uh, but it is also available in the store for two dollars and there's a trailer much like the masters of the universe one for d2 so you can check out what you are going to be listening to on youtube also a hot tip I, I should say hot tip i learned this while making the trailer if you illegally download the movie it's in pal so, uh oh! So, if you so, uh, if you so don't illegally download the movie, acquire it legitimately. Yeah. And also, if you want to see what our commentaries are like, there are several free ones up at our website where you can kind of see what they're about and what they're like to kind of mm-hmm. get a feel. Yeah, for. think about it like you're watching a movie with us on the on a on a Friday or Saturday night, mm-hmm. hanging out with your yep. friends a- in a your movie ears. Where we're obviously not just trying to watch it; we're going to interrupt your it ears. every fucking second. Fucking so, and all the funny parts are not in the trailer. The, the funny parts are some of the funny parts are in the trailer. Some of the funny parts, but <clears throat> a lot of the funny parts. Oh, are in the right. We should finish right. talking. So, anyways, unbelievable. <laughs> you go. You can go check out the stuff that we're doing on the internet. Brian works over at IGN dot com, where every Monday at noon he produces and uh, you know write, writes and also co-hosts the show called Up at Noon, where you can go check it out. It's awesome. If you go to destructoid dot com or rubbers dot org slash magnums with a z, <laughs> YouTube dot com slash detoid. You can see the stuff that Max is doing. We got drunk and played 50 Cent Blood on the Sand. That is is trickling out. Has anyone played that while not drunk? Uh, I I think, I think one of the QA testers might have, might have just been buzzed, but otherwise, no. (laughs) And then if you go to geekbox.net, you can uh, check out the Geekbox, the podcast that Ryan does where he talks about all kinds of, uh, nerdy pop culture. And then if you, uh, have questions of your own or you have job inquiries for me and Scott, you can send that to podcast. Or you can send that to uh, podcast at comedybutton.com. So that's where you can send your shit. And uh, you can check out my Twitch page at twitch.tv slash Jeff Money. That's where the, basically what I've been doing a little bit here on the side. You can find so me on there you. on MILFmaster420. And you can see what I've been doing at youtube.com slash the comedy button. Editing all of these videos, putting them up every week, breaking them up into segments. Subscribe to that. There, were, That's where Brian's uh, Nightmare Fuel was going to live. Yeah, yeah. I really like what we're doing on YouTube now. There, if you hear a story on the show, chances are you can find it in on YouTube form. in video form and not the entire episode. So if you want to share the show with somebody, uh, in fact, new listeners, I think that should be your task. If you like the show, is uh, get somebody else to listen to it mm-hmm. and make the cult bigger because yep. that's how we can kill everyone at the same time. <laughs> make us all your own personal David Koresh. That's right. And we will all go down in flames at our own compound in Waco, Texas. That's right. Yeah. Put some... Hi, NSA. Flavor in your ears. All right. Get it, girl. With that, we're done.